This episode is sponsored by Gearbox Publishing. Kerry Stagmer, and we are the blacksmiths of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite things and fantastic objects you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms Reforged. This week on Man at Arms, we're going to be creating the epic sword Eclipse from Godfall. We were very excited when Gearbox contacted us about making this. From the first time I saw the cinematic trailer, it was very obvious whoever created this weapon knew what they were looking at. Reversing Twist Damascus on two separate blades is very complicated work. We're bringing in our good friend Rob Deckelbaum. He's going to be creating this Damascus. And Forged in Fire champion Derek Kemper is back to create these blades with us. Rick and I are going to be doing this bronze casting, and Ference, of course, is sculpting the masters for us. We can't wait to show you the final creation. It's going to be an epic build. Rob brings the material into John for welding. 1075, 1045, 15, and 20. These different materials, once brought together, cleaned, and dipped in acid, will show a dramatic pattern. Rob and Derek now go to the Nazel 4B. The large hammer handles things of this size with no problem at all. The guys now go over to the Nazel 2B. We've set that up with a kiss block that's going to prevent overreaching of the die and forcing the material to be smaller than what we need it. We've got to have this exact size so that it'll fit into the twisting machine that Rob calls the sprucifier. Once the bars are completely made to the size we need, they're going to have to take the center sections and drive them to an octagon. The reason is if we leave the standing corners of the square and then go to the screw machine, as it twists, those corners can overlap and leave bad welds. The next process in our Eclipse Sword build from Godfall, I need to cut some templates and parts. We're going to be cutting it out of the alloy sheet metal using our plasma table. Before we can form these, because they're slightly curved, we're gonna to have to sand them, get them nice and clean. I'm gonna jump on the sander and do that now. The billets are now loaded into Rob Deckelbaum's Scrucifier. This machine has a two horsepower motor, but it has a 76 to one multiplier in the reduction. I'm just absolutely amazed at how smoothly this works. Of course, these two blades are opposite on a single sword. We're gonna have to make sure that the left one twists to the left and the right one twists to the right.
right now I am mixing up the epoxy clay putty to begin to build up the guard handle and pommel sections. We'll be working off of the computer model. This is going to give us the ability to look at all the different angles. What I've done is a basic sculpt on this and I've recessed this back down. The insert that we had before was flat, now it's been dished out. This is the one that Ellen is going to be pierce cutting and it's going to insert in here. What I need to do is build it back up a little bit so we have some space in between and then blend it in. So I'm doing the pierce work for the Eclipse blade. These are the runes that I've mapped out on 20 gauge steel. I have drilled all of the holes so I can get the saw blade through the hole. This is a jeweler's saw. Thread it through the hole, clamp the top part down. And then once you start sawing, you wanna just want to go pretty slowly to cut your shapes out or you'll break a lot of saw blades. Nope. And broke it. Back in the hole. Now that the twisted material is prepared, it's still in a pretty big bar it's going to have to be driven down into a rectangular shape before we can begin to forge these two swords. To spread this material, we're going to be using some spring swages under the hammer. The radius faces on these swages will push the material in different directions, whereas the hammer may simply draw it out in one. This way they can control the width and create the final form that we need for these blades. Guys now go to a swage block, a large steel block with lots of different forms in it. That's going to allow them to get complex forms that would be hard to do with just a hammer. So to some this may be strange, but I don't tend to use wooden dowels and such for curved sanding and forming. I tend to use the bones because I have so many variations in shape to work with. So we've got a lot of the basic forming done. We're starting to dial it in. Once I'm finished doing some form sanding, tightening up some of these lines. So we're about finished with the pommel for Eclipse from Godfall. We're adding some of the components in here. These will all get cast separately. This needs to end up in the center. The insert that Ellen has pierce cut, we'll split that in half as it goes down here. The guard, the shield are all finished. Carrie and Rick are going to sand cast these, get them all finished up nice. Assemble Eclipse from Godfall. The next step in the process of this build is to create the guard and the hilt. We're going to do this out of bronze casting. What we have here is Petrobon sand. All we need to do is take a master that Ference has carved, press it down into the sand, carefully tap it into place to get all the details pressed in, we'll carefully remove it, place the other half of the mold down, and then we can pour our liquid bronze in.
Decker now heat treats this massive blade. The heat treating of Eclipse is actually extremely complex. When you heat treat something that's been twisted, it'll untwist. What we've done is bridge the gap between the two blades, welded in some pieces that'll be cut out later. That should allow us to keep the blades equidistant and at the same time, prevent the twisting. Everything came out really nice and straight. Now I've got to get to grinding these blades. We'll polish them up so we can etch it and see the beautiful pattern that's going to come out. getting ready to etch Eclipse. And the designers did such a great job on the detail of giving us the left and right hand twists in these blades to work with. It's been a really long journey on this, from the forging, twisting them left and right in Scrucifer, getting this form done, getting it assembled, ground, heat treated, polished. I'm gonna get it cleaned up. We'll go into the ferric chloride bath, and that will give us an etch to show us the difference between the dark and light steels in here, and really set this thing off. Rob now cleans these blades completely. If there's any grease or oil left on the blade, it'll affect the final etch. Now with these magnificent pattern welded blades revealed and all of the bronze castings re-welded and back together, it's time for all the other detail work and polish that make Eclipse come to life. Click here to subscribe or click here to see more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the team to build. Tell us in the comments below what you would like to see.